was not uh, easy for me to you know um, get a hold of everything so i was really really depressed not depressed but i was really uh, disturbed just to make myself very strong and to be able to beat somebody <laughs> so that was the um, initial goal sometimes uh, 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 an athlete can peak sometimes they'll have to um, you know rest a little bit and then come up again i had this hunger that you know if things did not go as i had planned i will keep going this is what i love to do and i will keep uh, keep going with it i will keep doing what i'm doing today we have with us one of the biggest superstars of indian sports right now manu bakar she is the first indian to win two medals in a single olympic two bronze medals in women's 10 meter air pistol and the mixed team 10 meter air pistol events she narrowly missed a historic hat trick by finishing fourth in the 26th meter women's pistol final however as the country continues to celebrate her glorious victory she join us for a special interview manu welcome to the week thank you sir from heartbreak in tokyo 2021 to history in paris 2024 how did you motivate yourself to set the goal of winning a medal in paris honestly i would say coming from tokyo things were not easy at all uh how the events unfolded in tokyo and after that how um how everything unfolded so it was not uh, easy for me to you know um get a hold of everything so i was really really depressed not depressed but i was really uh disturbed by everything and i was really upset about many things uh so in a Actually, I um, I decided I'll take a break for maybe a month, but I could not um, I could not just take bring myself to take break for over fifteen twenty days. Within within twenty days, I remember I was like in the room with the kettle. I was like, yeah, I need to start with my holding again. I cannot be away from the sport anymore. Um, so I think that's how again I had this hunger that you know if things did not go as i had planned i will keep going this is what i love to do and i will keep uh, keep going with it i will keep doing what i'm doing so eventually um things started to fall in place and everything was starting to look better in life however in 2022 i was in the team i was a part of the national shooting team and uh, i was doing okay also but i was not enjoying the sport anymore i was uh, i was just it it had become like a job for me 9 to 5 job like you uh, go to the um, range and then you go to the gym and then you just go back and sleep so the same sort of thing started to repeat itself um, themselves and uh, i started to get bored of everything and then i think um, in 2023 by the time it was 2023 i was really really done with everything i was like it's either i drop this thing and probably try a new career line maybe in studies i can go or maybe something else i can do with my life because i was not enjoying it um and 2023 um so finally when i started to work with just palsar again that is uh, that was the time when things were like arya par you know matlab it's either you go on that side completely or you put yourself uh, you put everything that you have uh, into the sport or you just leave it at once you just do not be in uh, do not stand in between so uh, that was the time i decided okay this the sport is it for me and i am going to give everything i have all my energies all my resources everything that i can give for my sport so after that i never had any doubts about if i want to drop the sport if i want to uh, if i'm not enjoying the sport or anything regardless of my situation regardless of how uh, my uh, body was taking it like the physical pressure the mental pressure i was i kept going and i kept trying my best 
there were several competitions where i could not win an individual medal also but regardless i was like ki i have to do it i have to do it and it worked out really well for me <laughs> can you please tell us uh, about your equation with coach yes for rana how did he contribute to your success yes so initially after the tokyo phase it was my parents uh, my mom especially my mother and uh, my brother also they were the ones who actually lifted me up helped me um, be happy helped me be mentally more stable and um, you know um, be healthy and happy in life and then later on it was um, in 2023 as when we started to work together jaspal sir was uh, is a kind of person who will always be very positive and like he not just positive in a softer way but he'll be very strong with his beliefs and be very positive about it uh he'll not be like if you will try you will be able to do it and but, uh, rather he'll say you try it and it will happen so he's that kind of person and uh, i think because of which um, my confidence also over time improved a lot in shooting and how i was doing my technique was improved a lot because he works a lot on basics and all so because of which my technical part got law uh, got very very strong became very strong so these are few things and then other than that also i started to enjoy because i was traveling i was doing different things i started to take uh, up on different hobbies so that is how i think i really started to enjoy my sport again as we have seen that uh, you uh, you take up uh, shooting as career uh you you stand olympian hina sidhu hina so sidhu you, yes didi yes. so that during the national shooting championship 2017 mm -hmm. you, you you won nine gold medals at that time at that event i mean yes like, i got 15 medals 11 golds three silvers and one bronze right so was that the moment uh, which convinced you to pursue this shooting career honestly oh, sir no that was not the point and when you talk about um, shooters like hina hina didi i think um, they are one of the best shooters that india has ever seen and not just about performance but how they carry themselves how they've delivered at various uh, various uh, levels of shooting for india and won many medals also so it's about time when you know sometimes uh, 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 an athlete can peak sometimes they'll have to um, you know rest a little bit and then come up again so it's different for everyone and at that time no that was not the time when i was like okay this is it for me i was just going with the flow and uh, since i had started the shooting i was just going with the flow only even in 2018 when i won the commonwealth games i was not sure if i'll be able to stick around with this sport for a long time so it was more like okay i'm just going with the flow let's see where it takes me just just do what you are doing just keep doing uh, the hard work and let's see how it goes so i was more like that so manu you are the youngest indian to win a gold at the issf world cup you are the first indian to win a gold at youth olympic games you have set a commonwealth games record you are an arjuna award <laughs> how do you cope with so much success in such a young age uh sir so i think um, it's a matter of time when we win something it's better to put it aside and then move forward with another competition or another event that's coming up so for me it's just a um, it's just it's like a stop that i have uh, reached in in the path of my journey so the journey will be lifelong okay so um, for example you see your life as a journey and it's just a milestone or it's just a stop where you where, where you'll be spending some time and then eventually you'll have to move on because time does not wait for anybody a uh, time passes and it does not care if you're sad if you're happy if you're uh, winning or if you're losing so it's better to move on as quickly as possible and focus on the next event so before shooting uh, you excel in many different sports as well uh, from the archery volleyball tennis skating boxing even you you know the khanta yes yeah so and you own over 60 uh, medals at national level what, what made you such sport ba so um i got uh, medals at national level in martial arts uh, tantha and uh, i have state medals in uh, karate 
and boxing also uh, somewhat i was doing good and wushu i got state medal so certain competitions um, i think see being coming from a sports background uh, i started at the age of when i was in second third class i started with athletics eventually like everyone starts with athletics running only so it was 100 meters 200 400 relay races and cross countries for me at that time although i was very very young but i used to enjoy it a lot so coming out in the ground and just being athletic being just you know very physically active i just really loved to be fit since since childhood and then uh, after that i used to get in fights with uh, people especially with boys so that's how i really uh, started to you know fall in love with boxing and then karate so i just to be just to make myself very strong and um, to be able to beat somebody <laughs> so that was the um, initial goal but later i i uh, started to enjoy the sport and uh, different different sports i uh, started to enjoy them and then i would say that i used to, when when i used to compete in all those sports i think because of that uh, my career in shooting shot up really quickly because i was physically very strong i was very fit and then my shoulders were very muscular and strong are very mus- muscular and strong so uh, b- uh because of that only i was able to pick shooting very quickly in in my life and in my career and because i was competing since like childhood so that gave me that uh, that spirit of competing with people of trying to um, put in all i have all the efforts all hard work and then try to win so yeah you are also an equestrian can you please tell us about your love affairs with horses uh, so i'm not a professional equestrian but uh, i'm not like a professional profession um it's not a profession or anything it's just a hobby that sometimes uh, when i want to um go away a little from my sport or go out just refresh myself so that is a time when i take up hobbies like horse riding or say violin or say dance forms or something else so it just really um distracts my mind in a positive way and uh, if you think if you actually think about um, stuff like horse riding or violin or uh, dance forms i think it's a very good way that you can keep yourself very focused and you can train your mind also in different ways so ultimately it will be helpful for you in a longer term mentally and physically yes and i do not enjoy video games and all so which is why i am always going outside to try something new <laughs> that's great uh, your father once said that you might quit shooting even after winning an olympic medal now you have won two medals so are you going to prove your father true or are you going to go to another sport now uh see i'm not i will never try to prove anything to anybody ever not my parents not my friends n- nobody ever so it's just up to me and uh, for as long as i'm enjoying the sport i will continue to do it no matter how it's going for me but if i'm enjoying it i'll definitely do it even for 30 years i can do it next 30 years also i can do it or maybe if i'll feel like okay after say 5 6 years i'm done then so it's it's it will depend on how i feel towards the sport i want to enjoy it i love the sport and i do not want to make it uh, very you know uh, a, like a job so i do not want it to be boring for me i just want to enjoy everything or by you yeah, know keep thrill when you get thrill from something you want to even push yourself further you want to be fitter you want to be stronger you want to be better than everyone else so for as long as i i'm able to do it i will do it and i really really love my sport so for now there's no questions about it that i'm going to leave it or not i'm not that's it leave please continue manu you read gita yes as you said it helps you a lot uh, during uh, olympic to overcome the difficult situation when and how you started reading gita so um in my childhood years i would say it was my mom because my mother is a sanskrit and hindi lecturer so she always made sure that uh, 
so she, she was very very strict with everything in my life and she was like very organized okay if you do your complete your homework then we we'll, only then i'll take you to the park to play or then only i'll allow you to watch tv for 30 minutes so she has been a very she has been a kind of person who keeps me very disciplined and very grounded so uh, she was the one who introduced me to the shlokas of geeta and she uh, used to recite the meanings or the phrases for me uh, from geeta and then eventually i think um, in my day to day routine i just started it like a year ago uh, and my jo uh, meditation teacher he is the one who is like okay i'll tell you two shlokas today or three shlokas today and you should uh, take out this kind of meaning from it and you can use this in this way you can use it in your life also so it's my mom my yoga meditation teacher and my coach now who uh, keeps on telling me or give me example of it so we all know you are a huge fan of virat kohli and nirat chopra what do you like about these two players and also uh, a picture of you and nirat chopra has surfaced on social media and i think you are aware that social media is now abuzz with gossips that you two are dating each other so can you please fill the bills for us give us an exclusive yes i think um, both of them are very decorated players of india and what they have done for indian sports and uh, india as a whole country and the people who love them appreciate them uh, and always look forward to their matches i think that's the spirit that brings out the sporting culture in the nation and i really respect them for what they have been doing Uh, for the past so many years they, they've been consistent no matter they have had injuries no matter they have had any controversies or any situations about anything so it's just the spirit that they have for the sport which i really really admire a lot and uh, i think we all have a lot to learn from them and we should always take it in a positive way what all what we can learn from um, you know the legends around us we must take notes and we must always learn and try to you know um, better ourselves in as many ways as possible you 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 practice in bharatnatyam mm -hmm. and it's your passion i know yes so who is your guru and to whom you admire uh, in this classical dance sport uh, so i'm not very um I do not know much about this. Um, like who all are the Bharatnatyam um, legends, or like who are the um, most ex expert dancers and all. But my uh, guru is Indira, Indira Ma'am from Tamil Nadu, Indira Muru Ganeshan, and uh, she is the one who actually introduced me to it and actually who told me so many things I never knew about Bharatnatyam. And it's one of the most um, decorated dance forms that India has ever seen. if you see shiv shiv tandava or if you see any god or goddess perform it's mostly either like the classical forms mostly bharatanatyam and um i really enjoy that um i really enjoy bharatanatyam because it gives that divine feminine energy and i really really love it it's it's they say that it's the dance of the gods or the goddesses yes and i've always had love for it and it also bring um you know drive the indian culture um it's our matlab it's our culture so i love indian culture and the dance forms after your olympic success have you tasted your favorite gajar ka halwa <laughs> uh, after my um paris feet i think i've had so many things um being like a bajri ki roti i really love bajri ki roti and all we all have it in our haryanvi and rajasthani households so bajri ki roti chutney then uh, sometimes mummy allows me to um let she lets me eat different things for example aloo paratha also she allows me like once in two months and dosa she cooks really well churma shakkar churma if you heard haryana mein shakkar churma is like epitome of everything any uh, festivals we have it any anything we have it and gajar ka halwa not yet maybe in the coming days because garmi mein nahi banta wo sardi mein banate hain gajar ka halwa aur gond garmi aur sardi mein karte hain abhi ghevar ka mausam hai waise manu uh, right now we are in calcutta we are from calcutta 
and as you know there is the uh, incident happened uh, everywhere the women are protesting against that being a woman uh, of this country what is your message on this subject so this subject uh, i would like to say that so the basic right of any human being is equality and the right of freedom the right to equality and uh, if women are not getting that i i think like 50% of the population of this entire country is being exploited i'm not saying everyone is being exploited but if um say even 10 12% people are 10 10 12% women are i think we are not succeeding in a um very swift manner uh we are trying our best the government is also uh, trying to take initiatives against it or try are uh, trying to protect women but i think education is the only element that can actually help and actually eliminate this thing and the swiftness in um punishing the culprits is another thing that can actually bring a, a positive change but what has happened i think everyone is aware of it in the in the country and many people worldwide as well and uh, this as this does not portray a good picture of india also as a whole although only like some people are the um negative kind of people or the um not good kind of people but because of them also the picture of india as a whole also is sometimes portrayed badly so i think we should we everyone every each and every person should take um some responsibility to it and try to see this way i think women will never be safe in the country and we coming from a country like india i think we have this um legacy we have this culture of treating women as goddesses because in in uh, our mythology or history if you would say uh, we've always placed women as a goddess women as a as as a you know very powerful creature uh we always place women on the top but how it's been going in the current um, times it's not going good and it's not going to end well for us that unless we so take good measures against it and do something about it thank you so much for your precious time to given us thank you.